Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live, everyone. The streaming landscape shifting dramatically for two major platforms just this week. Today's Warner Brothers Discovery decision to shut down CNN Plus adds to this, this the subscriber woes, rather, that Netflix reported for its most recent quarter. So joining us now to discuss the state of streaming is Jessica Reef Ehrlich, who is the senior media entertainment analyst over at Bank of America. Jessica, great to have you here with us today to break this down. So how does Thank the so cancellation, much. absolutely, how does the cancellation of CNN Plus alter the valuation and even perhaps the rating for WBD, Warner Brothers Discovery? Well, it actually does not. Um, we, we really love the WBD, Warner Brothers Discovery story, and have thought that CNN Plus would be DOA as soon as Discovery took over. The mystery is why AT&T rushed the launch, why they spent so much money. They spent probably three times more than Fox Nation spent in, in the whole time it's it's been on with significantly fewer subscribers. So in our view, Discovery Warner or the new WBD management made the right decision. Um, and we're just puzzled what AT, regarding what AT&T was thinking to begin with. Jessica, what's next for Warner Brothers? Is it one massive bundle that includes all those properties and perhaps at some point folds back in CNN? Um, they ha look, they just closed the, trans the, the combination two weeks ago. And so th when they report, when Discovery reports Tuesday, they, they will not have operated uh, Warner Brothers at all. But we, we think this combination will be a f really a fantastic combination. We see it as a growth and deleveraging story. They haven't yet given their go-to-market strategy for streaming, but our expectation is that they will have a very robust uh, entertainment offering uh, HBO, some of the Warner product, the Warner films, and news and sports. So unlike most of the services that are available, this will have, again, a broad array of, of content of entertainment, but news and sports. And they will also offer subscription as well as AVOD or subscri lower subscription price with advertising support. Um, Discovery already offers that and their ARPU, the revenue they generate per month, is higher on their advertising product, or what they call ad light, than it is on their subscription only. So um, they're in a great starting position. Okay, so a good starting position. How much of the resources, whether human or capital, do you expect them to begin reallocating and how soon to really hit in stride on some of those timelines that we've seen them already rush to get out the door, but even now as they're repositioning to eventually be able to offer another compelling streaming platform in the future for some of the different viewers to take advantage of? Well, you know, the heavy lifting for Warner Brothers Discovery is just starting. They just took over. Um, and we do expect them to streamline operations. But from a DTC perspective, um, they have to, um, you know, have an offering for the U.S. And they've really barely, you know, gone to the rest of the world. So there's still a very, you know, long, uh, there's, a, there's a, a huge opportunity for them globally. Um, and they have to, you know, they're, which, uh, and they haven't done anything yet as a combined service. So it's, it, it's, you know, they've got a, in our view, a long runway for growth. Um, and they have a lot of content that potentially will go in it. If you just look at what HBO Max has done so far, mm -hmm. the engagement seems to be really, really high. Um, and their subgrowth, they beat their guidance last year, like they raised guidance two times and beat both times. So, um, I, you know, they seem to be on a very good path. Of course, you know, everything's tempered or colored by Netflix, but we see this as a very, very different offering. HBO and HBO Max adding 3 million subs, but Netflix really the streaming story of the week, their first sub loss in more than a decade. And you have Bill Ackman dumping his stock. That's $400 million in loss. Does that tell you things are going to get worse before they get better in Netflix? And is ad-supported content the solution there? Netflix is a different animal than many of the other companies the many of the other streaming services. What the studios have in general versus somebody like Netflix or Apple, um, they all have deep libraries. So they have content that consumers know and are very familiar with. They also have multiple platforms to promote that content and for viewers to see that content. Um, people are, consumers are very familiar with Disney, you know, with Marvel's universe and Star Wars universe. So these are, these are extensions of what they have. 
And it, it's not new. On the advertising side, um, they have very deep experience and they are, they're already advertising on many platforms. So it's an extension of what they already do. The demand is really high for limited advertising, three to five minutes of advertising in, in a targeted environment. So it's from, from that perspective, Netflix is the incumbent and has a lot to lose. And whether it's HBO Max or Disney Plus, the, the, these are the, the, the newer players who have a lot to gain. For Netflix that has been able to benefit from the growth phase of cord cutting and the hard swift move to streaming that we've seen, where would you say that we are in the streaming landscape right now in terms of that growth phase clearly being a thing of the past and now for some of the shuffling where people are deciding to pick and choose either their price point and based on that price point, which platform they're going to right. matriculate towards, what would you describe of the state that the industry is in right now in either that growth or that churn phase? I mean, clearly streaming is maturing. Netflix has been around for quite a while. Apple and Amazon have come in as well. So there's just a wealth of content. I mean, there's so much content. It's, it's actually confusing, I think, for consumers and very easy, unlike pay TV, super easy to turn on and off. So it's imperative to have very strong content. So just look at Disney Plus. They've been saying for two years, it will take until second half of fiscal 22, which is actually the June quarter right now, for them to reach their content cadence stride, for them to get to 100 originals a year, meaning they basically have two new either TV shows or movies every week. And that's what keeps viewers, you know, tuned into a service or, you know, that's what cuts churn. So it's very easy for them. Unlike let's say Netflix again, or Apple, I'm not trying to pick on Netflix. Every show is a new show and has to be marketed. So it's, 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 it's just, they're very, very different in, in that regard. But I agree, streaming is much more mature. It'll, it may be harder to keep consumers. Um, Netflix is the highest priced or one of the higher priced services. And so as such, there's still, in our view, a, a pretty big growth curve for the others. Okay, Bank Especially on the ad-supported side. Indeed. Bank of America analyst Jessica Reef-Ehrlich, appreciate your analysis today. Thank you.